The difference of two squares is not the only product that results from multiplying two binomials together. So some difference brackets will give us the difference of two squares, but if we have a pair of binomials that we're multiplying and they're not sum and difference brackets, our product will be what we call a quadratic trinomial. So let's just have a look and see. If we multiply x times x, we're going to get x squared. x times positive 2 is positive 2x. Positive 3 times x is positive 3x. And positive 3 times positive 2 is positive 6. Because these binomials had like terms in the corresponding positions, so x plus x and x in the first, and then a constant and a constant in the second position. Whenever that is the case, we will find that the middle terms of our trinomial will be like terms. So positive 2x and positive 3x will add up to positive 5x, and that is the simplified, uh, fully simplified trinomial. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this expression is called a quadratic trinomial. If we start with the word trinomial, we should recognize it. It means that it's an expression that has three terms. And the word quadratic in mathematics is used to describe an expression whose highest power is 2. Okay, sorry. Highest power is 2. So if you look at the answer, you can see that the highest power on the variable is x squared. The middle term is x to the power of 1. And then we have a constant at the end. And if we just analyze the product x squared plus 5x plus 6 a little bit further in terms of the brackets, the middle term we arrived at by adding the 2x and the 3x. So if you look at the numbers in the last, in the constants in the brackets, you will notice that 5 is the sum of the constants in the brackets. So we add 2 and 3 to get the coefficient of 5. And because we had to multiply the 2 by the x and the 3 by the x, that's why we land up with the answer as being 5x, because they were like terms. If you look at the 6, the 6 is actually more straightforward, because you get the last term of the trinomial straight away with your product by just finding the product of the constants. So in a quadratic trinomial, the last term is the product of the constants in the bracket, the middle term will be the sum of the constants in the brackets. And we can use that observation to help us factorize a quadratic trinomial. So if we want to work backwards, if we've got the trinomial and we want to find out what the brackets were that gave us that trinomial. So for example, a squared plus 5a plus 4. <clears throat> All right, so we know that whatever our brackets are that we decide on, to get a squared as our first term, we must have multiplied an a by an a. So that we can immediately know what, a first, what the first terms in our brackets are. We now look at the last term. We know that the last term of the quadratic trinomial we get from the product <coughs> of the two constants in the brackets. So the thing with 4 though, or the thing with any um, composite number like 4, is that there's often more than one combination of factors that we could pick. So we could think of 4 as being 1 times 4, but we could also think of 4 as being 2 times 2. And what I like to do in order to decide which combination it is, is I like to write the two binomials underneath each other. So just do like a little test. So for example, I want to see, I, let's say for instance that I think that the correct factors to choose are 2 times 2. If I write a and 2 and a and 2, I'm writing them next to each other. So Instead of this, so this would be, I'm just testing what my outers and my inners are going to do. So if this A is in the front of this bracket, that would be an outer, and this 2 would be an outer, because I'm now writing them underneath each other, the second bracket, this A would be an inner, it would have been over here, and I'm just writing it at the bottom here, and this 2 would be an inner. So I want to test. A times 2 is 2A, that would be my outers. A times 2 is 2A, that would be my inners. I know that they both have to be positive 2's because I need to get positive 4 when I times them, which means that they're either a plus times a plus or a minus times a minus. It can't be a minus times a minus because they need to add up to positive 5. So it has to be a plus and a plus. 
and 2a plus 2a is 4a, I need to get 5a. So this tells me that a plus 2 times a plus 2 is not the correct combination. So if we try a plus 1, a plus 1 and a plus 4, if we test our outers, those two would be our outers, we get 4a. If we test our inners, we get 5a, uh, apologies, 1a, and 4a, add 1a, is 5a. So clearly my brackets must have been a plus 1 and a plus 4. All right, I've got some more examples to do with you so that we can practice this process a little bit more. Okay, factorize fully if possible. <clears throat> so we can see that we have a quadratic trinomial. So it is possible that a quadratic trinomial could factorize into two binomials. So let's just start with 21. If we want to know what possible uh, constants could give us 21, we could use 1 times 21. And the other pair of factors of 21 is 7 times 3. This plus sign here tells us that our factors were either a plus times a plus or a minus times a minus because only signs that are like when you multiply them will give you a positive. The fact that we have to add them to get a minus and we know that the signs have to be the same tells us that our signs are in our brackets are going to have to be minus. So we're going to have an x and a minus and an x and a minus. Now if we look at it logically, because we don't want to necessarily waste too much time figuring out the factors, 1 and 21, are, 21 and 1 have got a very big difference between them. They have a difference of 20. So we can see that they, they're not likely to ever add up to 10 in any way. But 7 and 3 we know can combine to give us 10. So if we just test x and 7 and x and 3, remember that multiplying across there is testing the result of our outers. So our outers will be 3x if we choose these factors. X, oh, sorry, negative 3x because it's x times negative 3. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. And if we add them, that gives us negative 10x. So that is indeed the correct middle term that we need. So we know that our factors are x minus 7 and x minus 3. And <clears throat> it doesn't matter which way around you write the factors. You could have had it as x minus 3 and then x minus 7. That doesn't matter. All right, number 2, y squared minus 3y minus 40. Let's start by testing the product that, that will uh, the factors that will give us a product of 40. So there's quite a few. 1 times 40. 2 is also go a factor of 40. It will be 2 times 20. 3 is not. 4 is a factor of 40. It will be 4 times 10. 5 times 8. And I don't think there are any other factors of 40. No. Okay, so we now have a look at the signs to check what the signs are. Now, this is a little bit more complex because it's a negative 40. And the only combination of signs that will give us a negative when we times them is a positive times a negative. So the moment your final term is a negative, you know that the one bracket needs to be positive and the other bracket needs to be minus. All right, so we got y and y, and now we need to choose. We look at our middle term, it needs to give us negative 3. So if we look, 1 and 40 have a very big difference. 2 and 20 have a very big difference, it's more than 3. 4 and 10 have a difference of more than 3 it's likely going to be 5 and 8, because 5 and 8 have a difference of 3 already. So before we decide on which one needs to be negative and which one needs to be positive, y times 8 will be 8y. We'll come back and look at the signs now. y times 5 will be 5y. We want these two things to add up to negative 3y. So that means that I'm going to need my bigger coefficient to be negative, and my smaller coefficient to be positive so that when I add them, my answer stays negative. Because remember, we're not multiplying these, we're adding them. So it's, it's important that we make the correct one a negative. So if we want to get positive 5y, we must have times y by a positive 5. And if we want to get negative 8y, we must have times y by a negative 8. So that means that my binomials are y plus 5 and y minus 8. Okay, and, and if you like, you are welcome in rough on a separate piece of paper 
to re-multiply out these binomials and check that you get the same trinomial expression to start off with. Remember, don't do it as part of your answer because then you're just going backwards. You haven't answered the question. We were asked to factorize, so we must have brackets in our final answer. All right, <clears throat> number three, if we look at the factors of 35, there'll be 1 times 35, and two, uh, 3 doesn't go in, so it'll be the next one will be 7 times 5. Okay, 7 and 5 have a difference of 2. This 35 is a negative 35, so it must have been a positive multiplied by a negative. So we know that our one bracket's going to be positive, our other bracket's going to be negative. So let's just start with our 5 and our 7. a times 7 is 7a, a times 5 is 5a. We need those two to add up to a positive 2a. Because we want them to add to a positive, it means our bigger of the two must be positive and our smaller must be negative, so that when we add them we've got more positives, which keeps our answer positive. So a must have been multiplied by a positive 7 to get positive 7a, and a must have been multiplied by a negative 5 to get negative 5a. So that will give us a minus 5 and a plus 7. Okay, in your homework book there are some examples for you to try on your own, so please pause the video and try these on your own. Alright, number 1, n squared plus 7n plus 10. So, we know it's going to be n times n. This is a positive 10. So, we know that it's going, and sorry, it's positive 10, so it's going to be a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. We want them to add up to a positive. Two negatives are never going to add up to a positive, so it's going to be plus and plus. And the factors of 10 that add up to 7 are 2 and 5. <coughs> okay, number 2. Okay, and just remember that I'm not doing the process of the cross here because I'm just marking these with you, but um, you're still welcome to do the cross process if you are struggling to find the factors. x squared minus 10x plus 24, so it's going to be x times x. This is a positive, which tells us that it's either a plus times a plus or a minus times a minus. We want them to add up to a minus, which means that they both need to be negative. The factors of 24 that give us 10 are negative 6 and negative 4. Number 3. Number 3, a little bit more complex because the sign on the constant at the end is negative, which means that it must have been a plus times a minus. The factors of 4 that will combine to give us 3 are 4 and 1, but we want it to be negative 3, so we need our bigger of the two factors to be negative and the smaller to be positive. And negative 4 add 1 is negative 3. And number 4, <coughs> y squared minus 9y plus 20. This is positive, which means it's a plus times a plus or a minus times a minus. Because the middle term is a minus, it means that both terms must be negative. 20, the factors of 20 that give us 9 will be 5 and 4. Negative 5 subtract 4 gives us negative 9. 